Kia ora. Greetings from New Zealand. I'm Colleen Ward, and it's my pleasure and my honor to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award from IAIR. The International Academy of Intercultural Research has been a professional home for me since its inception in the 1990s. And I'm particularly pleased on this occasion as I'm sharing a Lifetime Achievement Award with my old friend and buddy, Jan Peter van Oldenhoven. Today, I'd like to share with you uh, a recent line of research that I've been developing with colleagues and students on cultural identity styles. By way of an overview, we'll consider what cultural identity styles are and describe the hybrid and alternating style. Then we'll look at a body of empirical research. We distinguish BII from cultural identity styles. We consider the relationship between the two styles, hybrid and alternating, and how these styles may vary over demographic factors such as age, gender, and generation. Then we'll look at both the antecedents and the outcomes of cultural identity styles with particular emphasis on identity outcomes and well-being. And finally, we'll have a closer look at alternating identities and how and when uh, this style may in fact be adaptive. So cultural identity styles, we have borrowed this concept from Brzezinski, a developmental psychologist who worked on personal identity development. And he described identity styles as cognitive and behavioral strategies that individuals use for decision-making and problem solving during identity development. Now we can see that this concept of identity styles is also relevant to the development of social identities and in particular cultural identities. So in recent years, my colleagues and I have proposed that there are two identity styles that individuals use to negotiate and integrate multiple cultural identities. And these are the hybrid identity style, which involves picking and choosing from two or more cultures and combining features in a unique way. This is contrasted with the alternating identity style, which refers to shifting or changing cultural identities depending on the circumstances. So in the words of our research participants, the hybrid style is about blending in a way that benefits you when cultures mix together. Whereas the alternating style reflects changing or shifting cultural identities depending on the circumstances. So knowing the time and place, when to have one mentality and when to have another mentality or cultural perspective. Now, we have been working in this area for a few years now, and the majority of our studies have been conducted in New Zealand with a variety of ethnic groups. But we've also done work in the United States and Canada, in Mauritius, and in Israel. Most of our research has been cross-sectional survey, but we also have longitudinal studies amongst these samples. We started by constructing and validating a measurement of hybrid and alternating styles. This is the multicultural identity style scale. And there are seven items that assess alternating and seven items that assess hybridizing. So as you can see on this slide, some sample items, who I am depends on the social context, which reflects an alternating style versus I am Chinese in a New Zealand way which is a blending or hybrid style. We'll start off by distinguishing cultural identity styles from bicultural identity integration. And I do this because this is a question we are commonly asked, what's the difference? Bicultural identity integration is about the characteristics of a bicultural identity. The extent to which the identities are perceived as blended or fused versus compartmentalized. So it's a perception, but it's also 
um, there's the effective dimension of bicultural identity integration, the extent to which these identities are felt as harmonious versus conflicted. So bicultural identity integration is an individual difference measure. And although BII and CIS are related, they are conceptually and empirically distinct. From a conceptual point of view, cultural identity styles refers to strategies that are used to manage multiple cultural identities. In short, it's how I am, who I am. So it's a more dynamic perspective on bicultural uh, identities. In the next slide, I'll show you the results on some um, exploratory structural equation modeling we did with a sample of Hispanic Americans that were sampled uh, on day one and day 12 of a daily diary study. And as you can see on this slide, that the items from the miss, the hybrid items and the alternating items load as expected on the correct scales, but do not load significantly, uh, saliently on any of the BII subscales. So we are talking about two different things. Now, how are the hybrid and alternating styles related? It varies. I would argue they're essentially independent, although it's not uncommon for them to be positive related with them at point one or point two. Uh, the extremes that we've found over our multiple samples in different national contexts is that Hispanic Americans, the hybrid and alternating styles are inversely related, though not significantly so. Uh, a real outlier amongst all of our samples are Arabs in the state of Israel. And here, the hybrid and alternating styles um, are moderately strongly related, um, a large effect size here. But I emphasize this is an outlier amongst all of our samples. Now, while we are very much focused on these styles as dynamic processes, recently we have undertaken a study where we adopted a person-centered approach uh, using a latent profile analysis uh, with Chinese Americans. And this is what we found. Uh, we expected to find four classes with those who were high on hybrid or high on alternating, high on both or low on both. And indeed, this is what we did find with the culturally disengaged, um, representing only a small proportion of the sample who used neither style to any, any significant extent, uh, contrasted with those dual processes, which were the largest group, who used both alternating and hybridizing uh, to a moderately large extent. We had the hybrids, we had the alternators, but unexpectedly, we also had a fifth group making up about 9% of the sample. And these were individuals who used both the hybrid and the alternating styles, but to a very, very, very great extent. So I think this demonstrates that the two styles are relatively independent and can be combined in different ways. Now, how do cultural identity styles vary across demographic characteristics? Uh, we find significant differences with age and with generation, suggesting that hybrid style increases over both. So we know that first generation score significantly lower in hybridizing than their second and later generation peers. And we also know that hybrid style is positively related to age. Both of these reflect a learning process that occurs through the developmental process and over generations. We do not find these uh, age and generation differences in the alternating styles, nor do we find any gender differences in the styles. This isn't really surprising because uh, to be able to hybridize definitely involves a learning process of acquiring a second culture and then melding it with 
a heritage or original culture. Now, what are the antecedents of cultural identity styles? Importantly to us, motivation to integrate predict, predicts the use of both the hybrid and the alternating styles. Indeed, this is why we embarked upon this line of research originally um, to determine if different ways of integrating make a difference. But beyond the commonality of a motivation to integrate predicting the use of both styles, we find that for the most part, the hybrid identity style is predicted by individual differences, such as intercultural effectiveness. Those who are more interculturally competent tend to make greater use of the hybrid style. And, and this is demonstrated in longitudinal research. In contrast, the alternating identity style seems to be more affected by situational and contextual factors. So both perceived discrimination and family conflict predict a greater use of the alternating style, whereas normative multiculturalism, as perceptions of how um, multicultural and diversity valuing your national context is, predicts uh, less use of the alternating style. So in constructing predictive models, it may look like this. Now, what about the outcomes? And how are these styles related to well-being? Well, on this slide, I will show you our core model. This was um, originated in research with Chinese and Greek New Zealanders, but it has been replicated in diverse contexts, including a very different national context, the Arab with the Arab minority uh, in Israel. And what we find, uh, we, what we've consistently found, is that the motivation to integrate predicts greater use of both the hybrid style and the alternating style. But from there, the styles seem to follow different paths so that the hybrid identity style is related to greater cultural identity cons consolidation. That is this dual or hyphenated identity uh, like a Muslim Mauritian, a Chinese Canadian. Uh, and in turn, cultural identity consolidation leads to greater psychological well-being. However, for the alternating style, although it is also predicted by a motivation to integrate, it in turn predicts greater cultural identity conflict and following from that, lower levels of well-being. Now, this model was uh, admittedly um, constructed and replicated with cross-sectional data. But we can, we can look at also longitudinal studies. So here, looking at our search with Hispanic Americans in the simplest terms, you find that the hybrid identity style is related to positive outcomes like greater life satisfaction, self-esteem, and well-being, whereas the alternating style is related to more symptoms of anxiety and depression, as well as lower levels of self-esteem and lower levels of psychological well-being. If we look at um, the effects or the outcomes of these identity styles on uh, symptoms, we find that uh, again, the hybrid style is associated with more positive outcomes. Over time, the use of the hybrid style is associated with lower levels of both internalizing and externalizing symptoms. And this here I refer to anxiety and depression for the internalizing symptoms and social aggression and rule breaking for the externalizing symptoms. But let's just take a closer look because the data seem to be pointing to um, alternating identities as being associated with um, negative outcomes, more identity conflict, lower levels of well-being. But our qualitative data, our um, research participants are telling us, no, it's functional, it's useful. And they describe it, it's like, that's what people do to fit in or um, being able to alternate makes it easier to get along. Noting in the second quote, I'm not being two people, someone I am not. This suggests the possibility 
that alternating may be adaptive if the individual feels like they are being themselves or indeed they are authentic. And we are indebted to Alex West who recommended to us that we might look into the authenticity issue in this line of research. And indeed, it was a good idea. Because what we found when you talk about when may alternating be adaptive, we find that alternating is adaptive when the individual feels like they are being authentic. So this graph represents the interaction effect between authenticity and the alternating identity style and um, its effect on cultural identity conflict. And what we can see is that authenticity attenuates the relationship between alternating and cultural identity conflict. When um, authenticity is high, the relationship uh, between uh, alternating and cultural identity conflict uh, is not at all strong. So that's the win, but there's another way uh, about how, how uh, alternating can be adaptive. And we find that alternating buffers the effects of acculturative stress on externalizing symptoms. These data come from Hispanic Americans. And as you can see in the graph, we find that um, alternating essentially buffers or attenuates the relationship between a culture, a culturative stress and externalizing symptoms. By way of conclusion, now I could talk forever on cultural identity styles, but uh, this is a brief presentation. I'm going to draw it to an end. Um, take home message, the hybrid and alternating styles are dynamic cognitive and behavioral strategies that individuals use to manage their multiple cultural identities. Both are activated when the individual is motivated to integrate. The hybrid identity style is consistently associated with positive identity and well-being outcomes. It performs like we would expect integration to perform in that we know integration is associated with positive psychological and sociocultural outcomes. The alternating style is more complex. It can sometimes be associated with negative outcomes and it is consistently associated with greater cultural identity conflict, but under certain conditions, uh, it, it can be functional and have a positive effect. So the take home message here really is, it's not just about integrating, but how one integrate, integrates makes a difference. Uh, in terms of future research, or actually research we're in the middle of, but haven't analyzed all of our data yet, we have a longitudinal research of three time ways with Chinese Americans, some experimental data where we have attempted to manipulate contextual factors and look at the effects on the identity styles. And we're also expanding our repertoire of outcome variables so that we'll be considering not only well being outcomes, but if these identity styles are also related to intercultural relations. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues and my students who have worked with me um, on cultural identity styles over, over the years. And uh, then I would like to thank you for sharing your time with me today. Uh, goodbye and have a nice evening, afternoon or morning.